Okay, welcome to our fourth spotlight session of Blackboard Learn. Um, today we have Dr. Katie Whitlock from the Department of Theater. Um, and she was one of our pilot faculty who taught last semester with Blackboard Learn before other faculty had an opportunity to teach with the system. So she has gained insight into how to organize course material and do some organization and uh, and making it the course look really inviting to students and easy to use. Woohoo! So, <laughs> Today she's going to demonstrate that for us. So. Certainly. Great. Take it away. Thanks, Peter. Okay, so today what I'm going to talk to you about is um, the textual analysis class that I ran in Blackboard Learn uh, in the fall of 2011. Sorry. Okay. So one of the pluses or minuses of Blackboard Learn is the flexibility of its initial kind of setup so that you basically enter with a blank canvas and you can choose how to distribute the information as you wish and what you think will be best served by the course that you're teaching. This is a great plus and a great minus. Great plus in the sense that you can really connect it to your own style of teaching and the way that you want to organize. Great minus in the sense that the students are terrified because they don't know where anything is. Um, <coughs> so basically they all go, you want us to what? Um, so, and I have theater children, so they were very vocal in uh, complaining about this. Um, some of the things that I discovered that I liked about this and some that I didn't. So you are limited in the sense that in Vista, you used to be able to do a header and a footer that were um, normal on every single page. And I did those so that it was always branded to the course. And I had used a template that Peter had created a year and a half ago, which allowed me to do an image and then also allowed me to put my office hours, my contact email, all of that kind of good stuff. And then on the bottom, it had contact TLP and all of the help hours. This one has less viability in that. And I kind of screwed up when I was originally trying to kind of create this course. So I was stuck with just the graphic. Um, and so what I did was I added a note in here um, so that I could get basically kind of put all of this information. And there's more information than usual because of the fact that this was a test piloting group um, to make sure that the students, I gave them the kind of, here, here's your steps of here's how if trauma hits, here's the things that I would like for you to do. Um, with this new system, if you're teaching with this this semester in the spring of 12, I would recommend that you are a little more lenient on students. If they don't turn things in exactly, they could have really encountered issues because I had several times where students would go, I couldn't remember what thing to push to get where because it doesn't have the same streamlined functionality of Vista in the way that the students are used to. It has it, it's just they aren't necessarily um, in the, the rhythm of doing it that way. So there is going to be some bumps for people in terms of that. Um, what I used, this was kind of my initial homepage. Um, it has a couple of links on it that are very specifically linked to the final project that we did that I wanted as a first page thing so I could change things. But I left the get help, give help kind of sensibility of the, of, uh, the discussion board. Um, I have my syllabus as a PDF. I did not use the add the textbook tool. Instead, what I do is I do an Amazon, uh, basically a list, so the students can go directly to Amazon and just buy them all as opposed to looking at the individual text. And that's a way that I've been doing it for the past couple of years in Vista, and that seems to have worked for the students. I also do an extra information site, which... <laughs> I build and then I it lives on the my web server through CSU Chico, um, which allows me to put other information and helpful links. It's been really slow. <laughs> yes. What's nice is the content does open up within. Um, this is basically general information about me. It lets students know the other courses that I'm teaching so that they understand kind of the kind of range of what I do as a professor. Um, my work as a director and a designer, which is often interesting to students because they only think of me in the classroom as opposed to outside of it. A secondary kind of note about my office hours. And this has basic um, the statements of academic integrity, academic river, and university and campus policy. It has helpful theater links um, so that students can find out more about general topics on theater, different union things. And I use this because this allows me to have an outside site that has information that I use for all of my courses, as opposed to things that are unique to just the individual course by itself. Um, and I 
I do that that way just because it's easier for me than copying over links back and forth. The way that I kind of decided to, I tried to put less links in the sidebar um, for the students <clears throat> simply because I wanted to try and make it as clean as possible. Because of the fact that it's a new environment, I wanted them to kick the tires, but I didn't want them to get lost. So I think that that was kind of a, an assumption of my part of trying to make sure that it would stay as uh, something that would feel at least somewhat familiar. Um, the main way that I used this was communication, but also for assignments. Um, and what I did was I created a page that then I linked each assignment, had its own folder, and then you could go off into the guidelines for that and the assignment deadlines. Some things were turned in online, some things were turned in on the class, just because they had some things that they had to do with Xeroxes as opposed to doing it with documents. Um, and so in terms of, and what was nice is you can actually put um, kind of fun video clips. So I used some humor in some of the initial ones, um, things to help kind of think, get them to think about perceptions. And I like the matrix. Um, let's see what else I've got in here. So if you went into one of these folders, so you would get, here is the actual guidelines in terms of what they need to submit. Uh, they actually had to sign up in groups so that I didn't have 15 people working on one play so that I could distribute it equally. Um, I use Pachyderm, which is another tool that is through the Center for Distributed Learning. Um, it uh, Lose Wire actually is very kind and lets me use it. There's actually, I think, another thing up on either YouTube or on the site that's about me using Pachyderm that Peter has taped for me before. Um, so I had a lot of links that were authoring tips, things for people to know, because this was they were building in a multimedia environment to then uh, kind of take all the information. I also had links off to samples of material um, and a couple of things like Picnic, which was an easy editor for them to use. So I put everything that they needed for the simple project. Everything was in the one folder. When they got past the first time of doing it, it made a lot of sense to them. I had to be very careful with making sure that they knew where things were. The one thing that the students miss is the glowing green dot. The glowing green dot of Vista which was easy for them to know when something was new within the course was particularly, they missed that because it allowed them to see in the sidebar, oh, I need to go to the discussions. Oh, I need to go to the assignment. That's one thing that they missed. They found themselves kind of liking that this had a little bit more fluidity and a little bit more flexibility, but they did miss, I just need to know the hard and fast rules. The other thing that was difficult for them was... They couldn't remember that an assignment would sometimes just be a black line with a, a black lettering without a line underneath it. So one of the biggest tricks was they couldn't remember what to click to submit the assignment. So I got a lot of my initial assignments sent to me an email of, I swear to God, I've done this, but I cannot figure out. And I know I'm like within five minutes of the deadline, so you're not going to see this, but I want you to know I did it on time. <laughs> So I got a lot of that, the first the first assignment in particular, and then I had a couple who kept having the same, like, I know I've done this, I, can't, I keep not finding it. So I had to reteach that multiple times just to cement it for them in terms of, remember, not everything looks like a traditional link. So that was a little kind of a trick for the students in terms of figuring that out. Um, I also chose to put on the all tools. And what I did was this allowed me to go through and kind of remove some things um, so that they could see announcements, help, calendar. Although I did not use the calendar tool in this, I lay out my calendar in my syllabus and that tends to be the more useful thing for me. And because the calendar is less fluid and it's linking to the assignments, I didn't really use the calendar that much. Um, discussion board, email, that sort of thing. I also added... Um, all of the discussion boards got placed into their own link in the same way that you used to have with Vista because that was the easiest way to kind of know. Um, so I had a get help, give help, course questions, which they all seemed to be able to do with no problem uh, asking me in class. Um, I did extra points for feedback uh, because this was a pilot group and just in terms of kind of like, okay, so let me know about what's going wrong, what's happening. 
they like that. Um, and then help for each other in terms of uh, with that final project because they were working in an online tool. Uh, this was a particularly useful, has the system crashed or have I gone crazy? Um, so they use that as a way to communicate with each other as well as texting each other on their phones. I originally did not have an email tool up because I just wasn't, th I thought, oh, the all tools would be enough. No, had to add the email link because they were like, I can never figure out where to email. Um, and they were never, it took them a while to trust this email. They didn't believe it was real. Um, so <laughs> they think it is mythic. So uh, I would get the occasional, I've emailed you here. I've emailed you in your CSU Chico. And for those who have been my students before, I've emailed you on Facebook. I was like, great, y'all need to stop. So, um, so I added the email tool and then, ooh, Yes, I don't get to view uh, grades. I was like, oh no, Peter's gonna kill me. But um, I added the grades tool for them just so that they could see kind of what's going on. I kept it limited to this because of the fact that with so much, I, what, they, what I began to realize was that it was easier that although they were doing group work and things like that, they found that going in through the assignments because then they were always connected to, okay, I'm gonna look at the structure assignment. So here's where the structure groups were. So here's who I've signed up for and they could see things that way. That was an easier way for them to track the material than to give them a lot of links that they weren't sure about kind of what was happening. Um, they were pretty good. We didn't have much trouble once we kind of got accustomed to this. Um, I will do some different things in this go round simply because I have different courses that require different things. So I'll make use of some of the other tools. But in my assignments, I used wikis, group discussions, group signups. Uh, obviously, I used the grade book. Um, and then I had a lot of material where they often had individual assignments that they had to submit and turn things in. I didn't do any quizzing with this particular class because that isn't what this class is built to do. It's, an anal it's a textual analysis class. So much of it is based on writing. Um, but I think... That's the general gist of kind of how I set things up and kind of what I encountered in the in the doing of this. Um, questions? Yes. What kind of feedback did you get from students then? So besides <coughs> the, I can't find a link to click for a site. My students were like, "Why are you changing? Why are you Why are you fixing something that ain't broke?" Oh. Um, uh, they were like, "I kind of miss." I miss Vista because Vista always looks the same. So they do miss the the comfort of the similar structure. Although you can choose to disable certain tools in Vista and not everything looks identical. My Vista section doesn't necessarily look like somebody else's. But I think it's their reluctance to have to learn something new. And I think where you're gonna hit that more is not so much with freshmen and sophomores, but with juniors and seniors. Um, that's going to be the people who are, and I'm teaching classes with upperclassmen this semester that are going to be like, oh, you're making us use the new one. Um, but uh, I think if you, I think it's one of those, if you can explain to them kind of the reasoning of it, they're more kind of like, okay. And I basically sold all of mine on it. and like, look, you're learning how to do this before everyone else is going to be bitching about it. So stop complaining. Um, and they were like, okay. Uh, in terms of, it was basically that they had to learn my way of thinking to understand how I laid it out. And many of these students had had me before, so that was not as big of a challenge as it might be on like a large GE class. So I think being as clear as possible in the classroom as to how you've laid things out is the best tool that will serve you in terms of students being able to accommodate and deal with their own frustrations of, I couldn't find this, I couldn't get here. Um, and mine, once we went past the initial kind of bumps, they were like, oh, okay. And they liked, I used the wiki tool on one thing, which I know Jonathan's talking about tomorrow in his spotlight session. They liked that because it allowed them to input image and to do things with color and layout that they'd never been able to do in Vista. So that was one way they were kind of like, that's kind of cool. Um, the other big technology piece, they became really focused on the packeterm usage because that's an external tool that I use in the context of the class. So that was the next kind of stumbling block for them. So basically I made them use a lot of stuff that was new to them. And they had initial frustrations, but then they just kind of ran with it and were fine. Um, I think if you treat it like it's not that big of a deal, 
they also kind of calm down and walk away from it and go, okay, fine. She's, she's going to give me, and I gave flexibility in terms of, I know all 15 of you individuals who are crazy have forgotten how to click this to submit an assignment. Please remember this for the next time. So it's just you have to be kind to them the first couple times they do it um, and know that they will forget things. And yes, there are great tutorials that are out there. They never look at them, ever. <laughs> um, because I like them, but they are students who just want to turn something in and they have five minutes. They don't have enough time to remember how to go back and find a tutorial. So you end up getting things through email. Can you scroll back up so I can see? Yeah. That? This is the, the home page? This was my home page, and I, in terms of kind of, I had put in the graphic, I tend to like to do a quote that kind of grounds the, that's where I live, and I like something that is a visual identifier for the students. Then I added uh, basically a note item so that I could add all of this information, which was uh, for the pilot program just to say, you're not going to be able to call um, regular IT support. It's got to be through me. Then I'll contact TLP if you can't solve the problem, that sort of thing. Um, so I added more information than I typically do, uh, just because of the fact that there were some extra steps in there. But this is a live class that you taught. Yeah, yeah, this is the class that I taught because it has, because um, this is, because this was all their links off to their final project stuff. And I did a, they had a, a, we did a survey of kind of the use of the tool for Lou. So there were a couple extra things on this that were very specifically linked to the class. And I taught it with 35 students. Um, they didn't have any problems with crashing. They never had any problems getting into anything. Their biggest problem was I couldn't, the biggest one was I couldn't remember how to submit the assignment. And this was, I did this in Google Sites just to throw something up quick so that you could link off to everybody's individual final project in Pachyderm. Um, and what's nice is, is it keeps you in the page, which is really nice that if you link off to something else, they don't get lost if you've opened another window. So that is pretty useful. And I think if you do a lot of external links, which I know sometimes in the religion class you do, that it's nice because it keeps it all within the frame. So how did you do that again? All this is, is this is a link that's on the home page. So this is actually a web link. And what it does is instead of keeping you, remember how in Vista, when you had one that opened, it kept all the Vista toolbars, so it was really clunky. This just keeps it in the full page. It just keeps the top is where it holds it. So that's a really nice kind of, it makes it more useful and it students are less prone to get lost, um, I think, in terms of kind of maneuvering back and forth from external sites to things that are within the class. And what about calendar? I didn't use it so much. Um, no, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in a syllabus and syllabus as contract, which is the way I was kind of raised to do this. Um, so for me, yeah, if you get, uh, you know, through all the verbiage, I lay it all out right here. So it's laid out from day one. Um, and because of the fact that it doesn't have as much a lot of times in the pilot, we talked about the calendar and people were talking about how the calendar was not as fluid in terms of its linking. So I just went, I'm not going to bother with that right now. I'm just going to deal with getting the assignments up and teaching with this. And I didn't have any problems, but they also never had class. Um, they always met with me two times a week or three times a week. So since they saw me every other day, I could remind them that stuff was coming due. So it would be more useful if you were having sessions where you weren't meeting with the students to try and keep them on track, I think. And your syllabus is a PDF that you put in as an item? Uh, I attached it to, I can't remember the, the um, category name. Is it an item? Yeah, it's just an item and then you can attach to it. What's so. telling you right now that that's an item, that icon? Yes. That thing of the jiggy, because that's discussion board. That and then link. That's item, and you can attach when you're making an item. And then you can also do folders. So this is a folder that has. These are all of my. I do an MLA citation. I use the asking analytical questions and how to write good discussion that I think was provided by TLP. And these are more items where things are just attached, and then a link to like final exam schedule and things like that. So I do all that standard for me to kind of put it. And I, I copied a lot of kind of the way I laid stuff out in Vista just because that seemed to make sense to me. 
Um, and the students didn't seem to have much trouble in terms of finding that material. The biggest thing for them was like, how do I submit the damn assignment? That was the biggest thing because when you're in an assignment, because Kate, you came in a little bit late. No, 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 that's okay. When you're in an assignment, Oedipus with Vegetables, excellent film. Um, I hope they just signed up for group analysis on this one. Uh, let me get to the final. So this had the guidelines are attached. That which does not look like a link is actually where you do the upload. It doesn't look like it's actually a link because of the fact that it doesn't have a line under it. So this is where the students would be like, I can't remember where it is that I go to submit it because it doesn't look uniquely different. But it's that. It's that black header. So you could title it, click here. <laughs> exactly. You could do, yes. And I never, I never went to that because I was like, grow up, learn it. Um, so, and they did pretty well. And it's got better tools for like typing directly in if you want them to do it within there as opposed to having to open a PDF or something, depending upon how you use the assignment tool. So it's a little cleaner once they get in it. It was the getting in it that was the mess for them. And this was the little group tool. So, um, and you can, this is, they, everybody picked their final group kind of deal. Only a couple picked that. So once you signed up, so then it took you into the group tools where you could see your group discussion board. I didn't have group assignments per se do. Um, I did that only, I used a wiki in one of the first sets um, as a test to see how that would kind of work. The only thing I didn't like about the using the wiki tool and the group tool was that it made my grade book much longer. Um, and I was just like, oh, now I have like 15 columns that I wasn't expecting to have. So I wish it would just when I when I've assigned the same assignment, but they're in groups, I wish it would just keep it as one column, as opposed to each group having its own distinct column. It's easier to track them. I can't show my grades because of FERPA. So I'm sorry, that is illegal. So, so yes, so it was a little wonky in terms of that. And then for me to track back into my Excel, I was like, I'm just going to try and condense these back down. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All good. We have uh, one more tomorrow. John Canoli will talk about. Uh,